Bonjour à tous and welcome to Walk, Talk and Learn French. Welcome to Paris. It's a beautiful day. It's September. Wonderful to be here. Live. Okay. Now, I was just walking and I spotted this lovely, lovely, lovely poster. Mm -hmm. And I think there are about three things that are very interesting there. Okay. First one. Quand il y en a pour un, il y en a pour deux. Il y en a is spoken French. And it should be il y en a. But when you speak very fast, we say quand il y en a. Now, il y a means there is or there are. Quand il y en a, when there is, pour un, there's enough for one. Il y en a pour deux, there's enough for two. I get that, huh? So, il y en a, spoken French for il y en a. Okay, so this is Mark back in the studio, and I'm just going to interrupt Pierre Benoit there for a moment to give you some further explanation about this phrase. First of all, I'm sure you're familiar already with il y a. It means there is or there are. For example, à Paris, il y a beaucoup de monuments. In Paris, there are lots of monuments. Now, en is one of those tricky words in French that's quite difficult to translate. It tends to refer back to something that has either already been mentioned or that's understood anyway. For example, if I said, J'aime les monuments, il y en a beaucoup à Paris. This means, I like monuments, there are lots of them in Paris. So the en refers back to the monument. In the example we're presenting here, the en refers to something which hasn't really been mentioned, but which is understood in the context. In order to understand this fully, we better explain a little more. If you're not familiar with the film Ratatouille, it's about the adventures of Rémi the Rat, who comes to live with the aspiring chef Linguini. The phrase quand il y en a pour un, il y en a pour deux, could be used in the situation where an unexpected guest arrives at a mealtime and Rémi is something of an unexpected guest in the film, at least to begin with. In English, we'd say something like, don't worry, there's plenty to go around, there's enough for everyone. So in French you could say, ne t'inquiète pas, quand il y en a pour un, il y en a pour deux. As we'll see in just a moment, the phrase is used on this poster to indicate that there's a special offer associated with the film. Second thing. Allez voir Ratatouille, it's all about the wee film. Une place achetée. Now, do you notice there? Very interesting again. Une place, it's got an E, it tells you it's feminine. And you've got acheté next to it. And acheté has got to have an E because acheté, which means bought, goes with place. So acheté has got to have the feminine bit of place. So it's got an extra E. Cool. And as a matter of fact, that leads me to my third point. La deuxième. Deuxième, deux. Mm -hmm. Deuxième, the second. But you put la, it's got to be female because it's actually uh, making reference to une place. So let's just go over the second and third points that Pierre Benoit mentions. The verb acheter, of course, means to buy. When it's used like this, acheter, it literally means bought. So une place achetée means one bought seat. Basically, if you buy one seat, you get the second one for one euro. In English, we'd be more likely to say, buy one, get the second one for one euro, or something like that. The crucial thing here to note is that we're talking about une place, a seat. The word place is often used to mean a seat at the cinema or the theatre, and of course it's feminine, so the adjective which goes with it, in this case, acheter, has to agree with the noun. In this case, we add an extra e to acheter. Equally, because it's une place, it has to be la deuxième. So, we can see that the three things which relate to the feminine noun place are une, the extra e on acheter, and la deuxième. If this poster were in a bookshop and applied to books in a series, for example, then the slogan would read Un livre acheté, le deuxième à un euro. So, in this case, we have un, referring to livre, masculine, 
acheter with no extra e and le deuxième, the masculine form. Now, agreements are an important part of the French language, and it's by seeing examples of them like this that you will begin to use them correctly yourself. Okay, back to Pierre Benoit in the streets of Paris. Cool! So, un, deux, trois. Three good points in that wee lovely poster. Let's carry on, let's go! This podcast was brought to you by the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at www.radiolingua.com.